Hi guys, welcome to my channel and today I'll be talking about how you can get into universities across the world, mainly focusing on USA, from my experience. Well, I haven't had much of an experience because I started applying in September last year and that's pretty late because I had to rush up a lot of things. So I think it's better you start from an early stage in your uh, 11th and 12th grade. Um, I'll just tell you the colleges I got into. I applied to a very few because US was not my first priority. So I got into University of Illinois, Chicago. I got into University of California, Berkeley. I got into Purdue University. I got into Northwestern University. I got into University of San Diego and I also got into Ohio State University and this is in USA. And I applied to UK and um, Singapore too but I'll have to wait for their results. But I wasn't really interested in them because I wanted to study only for NEET. And I think it's still the same way, but again, I did apply, so I'm gonna tell you guys. Okay, let's start with the first thing, that is academics. Now, academics isn't the top priority. I mean, obviously it is a priority, but it isn't the considering wala factor as it is in India. So, I maintained fairly good grades for 9th, 10th, 11th and 12th and even if you maintain decent grades for all these four years and you get a decent predicted score in 12th grade then you can easily you know set a bar. So it's important for you to maintain your grade, don't let it dip down in any year. Uh, it doesn't have to be exceptionally good, just good grades are enough and yeah, so just focus on your weekly tests and just don't take them lightly, study for them. <laughs> okay, so academics, I think that's it and then so the application for USA is based on this application known as Common App and there are several criteria you have to fill out in the Common App and one of the first once after academics which is included in academics is the honors so if you've had any academic achievements like excellence awards your scholar badge or uh, uh, like the one school gives out or the ones you've achieved in at a national or international level and olympiads etc you can all include them in them and make sure you don't lose out on any opportunities for Olympiads and any scholarly achievements because they really count. Now the second thing people have asked me is uh, are SAT, writing SAT tests necessary? And my answer to that is writing SAT 1 is necessary and most of the colleges they only accept you if you have a decent SAT grade, not grade, marks. So. I got pretty okay stat marks. I got 14.10 and that's because I really didn't study for it but I suggest you study for it right from the beginning of uh, 11th and if you're in 10th then well and good you can still study for English because English is the part where people usually lose out on marks. So get your sad books, get Princeton, Barron and start studying for it. Sat 1 is compulsory you have to write it and try getting a score above uh, 1450 or 1400s and, and it depends on your college. If your college wants a higher score, you should probably aim for that. And SAT 2, that is subjective, I'm talking about only science stream here. I wrote SAT 2 for uh, physics, chemistry and bio and I should have written maths because there are a few universities where I couldn't get in just because I didn't write maths because I didn't like maths but still I took maths in uh, 11th and 12th I should have written maths so it's suggested that you write maths too and it's pretty easy sad two subjective tests are very easy you just have to practice a lot and be kind of conscious when you're writing the exam and sad two I got uh, 780 780 in physics and chem and I didn't bother attempting again because like I've seen many people try for 800 and this 800 they try because that will get into that will get them into colleges in India but then yeah it's not necessary again and in bio my SAT score really dipped down it was 690 but uh, yeah again the paper was hard but yeah 
so that's about uh, sats and if you have any other doubts about how to prepare for sat then you can let me know one thing very important the third thing is that you need to have a very diverse extracurricular if you want to balance it out with your not so at the par academics so if you have a lot of extracurricular activities and uh, things you've participated in things where you've shown your leadership skills then you can easily get into many colleges because that's what they look for they look for people who can um, kind of make name in the future so for that they need leaders and they need people who like they have they need people who have multiple qualities so i've had quite a few extracurriculars and i think i mean according to my analysis these are the things that probably got me into some of the colleges so i just list there you're supposed to write down 10 extracurriculars in your common app and i wrote down 10 and i'll just tell you what all those 10 are and you'll also have to describe them in a few words so i'll let you know what the description is about in some other video so my first extracurricular is vocal music and second one is MUN, third one is art, fourth one is yoga, fifth one is Olympiad, sixth one is community service, seventh is internship, eighth is the TED talk event I organized, ninth is research activities, and tenth is uh, a few online courses I took up for biology. So um, these are my extracurriculars, but you can have many of them. And if you've had any exceptional achievement or have done something really good for the society, then it's worth adding it to your extracurricular sessions because that really makes a good impression. And I haven't had any leadership activities in the past four years. That is from ninth grade. I haven't been in the student council, but it, it still didn't matter because the other extracurriculars kind of made up for it, but it's great to have a leadership position in any of these few years. You can go for Toastmasters, you can go, just try to grab opportunities as much as you can. Don't let anything go off just because it might like hamper your academics in some way. And also uh, the way you have to arrange these extracurriculars is just see how many hours you've spent on it, how many awards you've gotten and how diverse are the activities that's it about extracurriculars and uh, yeah also keep attending MUNs even though if you feel that they kind of take up your time but MUNs are a very good plus point all right and now the fourth and most important one is your essay okay the last component and the most important component that is your college essay your common app essay so you'll be have uh, you'll have to submit a common app essay and you'll also have to submit few additional essays for each college. So the common app essay is very important. It's almost like a break or make kind of thing. It makes a impression on the admission officers and it basically gives them an insight into your personality. And that is very important. They want good people for their college and you'll have to make a very good impression. That doesn't mean that you'll have to boast about yourself in the essays. So basically essay kya hota hai ki they give you a few topics, a set of vague topics. I think they're about six, seven to eight. And you'll have to select one out of them and uh, write a 650 word essay. It has to have really good content and it basically should be very interesting and the admission officer should just be like, we want this kid. So I don't think I have that good essay because I didn't really work for it, but I still wrote one and I can read it to you right now. So just stay tuned. <laughs> My essay, I don't know doc. This is the title. No, I want to be a doctor. I said as my cousin in USA asked about my preferred universities for neurosciences while discussing my career options. It was the first moment in my life that I was so clear about what my future holds for me. I always knew I wasn't made for the corporate hamster wheel life. So this is the journey of my self-discovery. According to my religion, the first toy a baby touches reveals their future. I should have figured out that being a doctor is in my destiny when I picked up the stethoscope over other toys. Belonging to a doctor's family, where both my mother and grandmother are gynecologists, I got invariably inclined to biology. 
My mother started pursuing her post-graduation in gynecology when I was just 18 months old. I could vividly recollect my earlier memories of visiting her in her hospital when she had 24-hour shifts without any break. I always felt intrigued about how my mother and grandmother work around the clock with so much passion, even sacrificing their personal lives for a noble profession. Our dinners were always peppered with the interesting conversations centered on the atypical cases handled by them. The hospital was my second home where you could always see me observing my mother and her patients. Although I was a tad bit scared of blood and incisions, regularly seeing surgery images made me immune to it. I couldn't help but notice how my mother and grandmother were the only persons whom my family looked upon during a medical emergency. The feeling that I too can be some of be of some help to people reinforced my desire to become a doctor. It made me believe that no other profession can provide that amount of respect, happiness and satisfaction. My mother recognized my interest at a very early stage. She regularly narrated unusual cases and explained to me about human anatomy and physiology. As a kid, I often stayed with her for night duties where I observed the patients and felt the entire process of medicine extremely engrossing. Another person who had an enormous role in strengthening my passion for science was my tutor, Ms. Shoma Roy. While others perceived science as a burden, she made me look at it as an opportunity to learn and explore. I was sure of taking science for higher grades, but I was at crossroads on whether to take pure biology or biology with maths. After a lengthy discussion with my parents, I decided to go with biomath along with IIT JE training. At this point in my life, I had no clue what I was doing. I was simultaneously studying for both engineering and medical exams. I wasn't sure if I had to become a doctor or choose any other science stream. I took an online career quiz and tried consulting my teachers, yet nothing resolved my confusion. During this phase, everyone recommended alternate career options for me in biology while I pretended to be interested in them. The confusion reached a saturation point. I tried making myself believe that I was fascinated by those alternate career options. Since I was traveling directionless, my parents chose to seek help from my cousin working abroad. She tried to help me pick universities for research sciences. Although I had many opportunities, it just didn't feel right. It felt as though I'm missing a train which will never come back. It was that moment it struck me that I cannot envision a future where I'm something other than a doctor. My friends and family believe in me more than I do and constantly motivate me. I was on cloud nine when one of my friends replied to my general question saying, I don't know, doc. I instantly knew what I want what I really wanted to do in life, and I can't imagine myself being anything other than an astute medical professional. So like, thanks Arushi for calling me a doc and making me clear about my career. So yeah, this was my essay. It's not that great, but the, you just get an idea about what kind of language you need to use and how it has to be. That's it about the four criteria you need for getting into a college in USA. There are a few things you have to remember. Number one, if you're in 11th, you just came to 11th, then start preparing for SAT. Start uh, organizing your uh, things for Common App. Start participating in as many competitions as you can if US is your only priority. But if you're simultaneously preparing for competitive exams, then yeah, please do give time for them too. And if you're in 9th and 10th, then start learning for SAT English because it's going to really help you in 11th and 12th. And uh, in 11th, start, also start brainstorming ideas for your Common App essay. And yeah, basically just involve yourself in as many activities as you can. Try maintaining your grades and just have fun because they need fun people too. All right, so that's it about... Uh, how to get into a US university. So if you want any more videos, then please let me know. After this, after a few days or something, I'm gonna do a video about how to plan your studies for uh, competitive exams in India. So yeah, I'll keep you guys posted. Thanks for watching.